Affordable housing is a major issue in most Canadian cities these days. With house prices at an all-time high in Saskatoon, organizations like the Saskatoon Housing Authority are busy trying to keep up with demand. Saskatoon Housing Authority is an agency that manages publicly funded um, social, which is rent geared to income, uh, and affordable housing. These programs are offered to families, persons with disabilities, and seniors, and uh, they are um, for low income persons. With 14 family and seniors buildings throughout the city, the Housing Authority was excited to partner with the Artists in the Community program and offer some free arts programming to its tenants. This was an excellent program and it's a program that um, had value to our tenants and gave them, uh, you know, just a, a real lift and um, it's a program that I would like to see continued. Well, we have tenant associations that are formed in each of our family complexes as well as senior buildings. And these tenant associations are there to provide and support uh, various programs and activities for the tenants who reside there. So everybody had an opportunity to find out about these programs. The one thing about Kevin that we found was he was very flexible. He was very open to whether it was working with a senior, a person with a disability, or with a youth. I'm Kevin Quinlan. I've been working with um, Saskatoon Housing Authority, partnered with Saskatoon Housing Authority. Mm -hmm. And I've been running a series of workshops in the seniors' buildings uh, around the city uh, that are owned by Saskatoon Housing Authority. And also I've been doing workshops with youth uh, in the townhouse developments owned by the Housing Authority. The types of programs that he, he started out with youth doing uh, mask, masking, and so they all were able to put a mask together and to design it the way that they wanted to. They did cartooning, they did some sketching, some drawing, and some a sculpture as well. Is he strong? Yeah. Yeah, he's okay. If you want, take this and shape the outside edges of the base because you have to make it nice. Even if 15 people did cats, they would all be different the Mona Lisa, no one's copied that yet. Well, oh, a lot of people have tried. I've seen, uh, you know, pictures of reproductions, but none of them are exactly the same. They're all different. I tried to copy my If I want to make a building sort of thing, how would, how would you burn that? Someone make it like... It won't because there's no... Well, I can't stay out as late as I want and I sure can't keep all the kids as late as they want. Because I'd have kids here till midnight, and then I'd have mums knocking on the door going, where are my children? I'd say they're doing hard. Well, the youth uh, fell in the age range of 10 years to 16 years. At times we had some come who were younger than that, but our youth programs are for 10 and older, so the 10 to 16 year old. When it came to the seniors and persons with disabilities, the majority of them were in their late 70s or older. And a majority of them had uh, mobility or physical and intellectual disabilities. Um, and, and so it was difficult at times for them to set up for the program, even to set up their own materials. Um, and Kevin helped out a lot with that. There were a couple who came to different buildings, but not many. Most of them were from the building that it was held in. Mm -hmm. And I think it was just because of the age and, and mobility. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, those seniors who go out and about usually do that. But, you know, those who, are stay, who stay in their buildings, this gave them an opportunity to get involved in something and something that, that they enjoyed and, and could use their creativity. So we've worked in seven different seniors' buildings and three townhouse developments with the youth. Well, with the seniors, we've been painting mainly. Uh, we started off uh, painting in watercolor, just doing flower paintings, and then we went into uh, landscape, and we've done abstract, and we've done geometric, and we've done symbolist, and we've done work from the memory, and just trying each week to have a, a different challenge in painting. 
But of course, artists being artists, they paint whatever they want, no matter what I suggest. Well, first of all, I think we've produced 1,500 works of art with the seniors and probably 300 with the kids. You know, we did sculptures and we did masks with the kids. So if, if the artwork is all that we were using as a measurement, we've, we've got a very, very large, uh, very long yardstick. But I don't think the artwork is the only thing that's important. It's been about the experience. Well, first and foremost, fun. I mean, isn't that what it's about? We get to play with the brushes and we get to use paints and all that kind of stuff. So it's about fun. And it's about, I think, doing your own idea, like being able to express your own idea. So a person gets an idea and then they, they interact with the materials, you know, with the brushes, the paper and the color. And then your result isn't always a, a correct reflection of your idea for sure. It's a result of the materials plus the artist's idea, plus maybe blind luck. So you learn to step outside of yourself because you're not really in control, uh, and you learn to just relax and, and have fun with it. And in the end, just about everybody has produced some work that has really excited them. I think that it uh, encourages more people to uh, come down to uh, use their own creativity and also to socialize with one another and that's a really important function. Well it, it was interesting to me because I've done some residencies before in, in rural areas. I was out in Watrous, I was in Humboldt, I was in North Battleford and in the small towns we got a great response. The housing authority, um, I wasn't sure about it in, in the beginning, but when I was taken around to tour the facilities, I realized that this is very much like what we're doing in the rural areas because of course a lot of people from the small towns have moved into the city, into these seniors high rises. So this building where we are now, we've got 116 floor building, 111 floor building, this is a small town, it's a community on its own. And we have a tremendous facility here in the lobby that we can work in and there are other rooms that, that we can work into, we've moved around a bit. So each building has its own community, each building has a tremendous uh, facility to run an art class, and the people in, in the buildings have the time to participate. So it actually has worked out to be one of the best residencies I've ever done in terms of participation, in terms of people being excited, and the facility for the art class. I mean, you look around here, it's all windows and plants and, and people relaxing and having a good time, and for an art class, that's pretty hard to beat. I think it's about doing things for yourself. So much of what we do nowadays is very passive. We sit back and, and we're entertained, you know, in, in one form or another. Whereas art is proactive. You have to actually be doing something. It, the brushes won't entertain you on, on their own. You have to actually use them. So it's about doing something. And, and I think that's a real advantage. A lot of our seniors are unable to get out during um, the winter in particular. A lot of them have disabilities, whether physical, mental or emotional. And um, this would give them an opportunity 
to develop some skills. Um, as I mentioned, most of them also are low income, so they would not have been able to afford to take part in an art program within the community. Well, uh, sometimes there were people who came to the programs that didn't know one another before that, and so it was building community. Um, also, there were people who would come down and find these uh, participants taking part and would wander through and look at their artwork and and that got uh, the artists talking amongst themselves but also with other tenants and so that was a form of building community. Art is is very much about uh, about the social aspect I mean that the creation of art in community has been long been a, a project of mine and I don't mean creation of art in the community I mean in community I mean people getting together forming a little community for an afternoon and creating art we tend to think of visual artists especially as as working all by themselves they're starving in a garret they're tearing their hair out and and they're painting alone uh, late at night but it doesn't happen like that as often as you would think very often people get together in groups and they work and they help each other and they keep people working and they, they keep each other excited. And that sort of communal uh, association, I think strengthens the work. I think everybody's work is stronger be because of it. People learn from one another. You learn what you should do. You learn what you shouldn't do. Uh, but people are, are taking their in inspiration from one another. So the social aspect on its own is very important, but the way the social aspect feeds the creative endeavor, that's very important. And people are loving it. And even the people that aren't painting, a lot of the people that walk through the lobby, well, they'll stop and they'll see what we're doing and they'll chit-chat a little bit. And, and each week, you know, they'll uh, look and see what we're doing. So people participate in programs like this in different ways. And uh, in some of these buildings, there are people that uh, maybe have physical challenges that don't allow them to actually participate, to actually paint, but they like to watch and see what we're doing and come and see our shows. The art show was fantastic. Um, each person was given the opportunity to put a maximum of three pieces of their art into the show. And um, so this, this room and the hallways were just flooded with pieces of art. And, and as I mentioned, everything from mask making, cartooning, watercolors, you know, in terms of painting, drawing, and sculpture. And um, it gave them all a chance to uh, show off their own art pieces to their families and to their friends as well. And they were very excited about it. Well, we have uh, an exhibition over at Clinskill Manor. We have uh, 214 pieces in the show. It's a collection of works from Harry Landa Court, from Clinskill Manor, Shepherd. Uh, McNaughton Building, Scott Forger, Sturby Place, Leif Erickson Place, and Westview. And I hope I haven't left any out. But it's a collection of, of works from each, oh, Sutherland House, sorry, that's the one. From each of these buildings, we have painters in that uh, wanted to put some of their work into the shows. So we got it all framed, put it into the show. Uh, this, uh, of course, encourages people to frame the work, but also so that each of the buildings could see what the other buildings were doing and that's been exciting too as the people get to meet the people in the other buildings that have similar interests and I've watched some friendships develop too you know someone from one building goes to another building and paints and then they meet somebody from a third building who's going there too suddenly they're fast friends and they're out going to art openings on Saturday afternoon that they wouldn't have done otherwise so this interaction between the buildings has been very good. And the show has done that. The show has brought people together. Um, it's also nice to just sit back and, and see the, the actual uh, finished results of the program. Because of course painting, you know, we want to see a finished painting and, and we want to see it uh, on the wall and in frames. And, and to walk into a show like that where there's over 200 pieces, uh, it, you know, the, the a success of the program can't be denied. It's, it's everywhere. And that's a small sample of the work. 
a small sample because everybody who put in three pieces had 23 that they could choose from or more. Some of them had 40, 50 pieces and they only put in three. So it's such a small sample, but when you look at it in a group, it looks like a lot, and it is. We had a great opening, yeah, it was, it was uh, very well attended. We, of course, with that many artists, we had, uh, now how many artists were there? 37 artists participating. Uh, so even if just the artists show up, you have a good crowd. But of course, each of the artists brought friends and, and we had a, a really good crowd and lots of food and that kind of stuff. And people uh, took the time to go around and look at the work and they're still doing that. I've been talking to, to the people over at Clintskill and they say every day people come specifically to see the show and they walk around and, and look at the work very, very seriously and then sit down and talk about it. And the people that live in the building are talking about the work uh, in a very serious way. And something that's kind of surprising the artists from Clintskill because they didn't think the other people living in the building were as interested as they really are. But once the work is up, it gave them a chance to participate too. For our seniors, it gives them, um, and it's hard to say, but it's for health reasons too. Because if they're out and about, that puts them in a different frame of mind and they will stay healthier, we hope, longer by taking part in, in projects such as this. And in fact, they would like to see more of these types of programs. So we are looking at um, uh, other ways of funding this program and to continue it on. Mm -hmm. I believe that it allowed them to gain an appreciation of art, a basic knowledge of the different techniques regarding art uh, and the different forms of art. And also I believe that they were given the opportunity to learn from one another and what was really, I guess, beneficial because they were low income was the fact that they did not have to pay for their materials and their supplies. And uh, now they can go home and they can do art within their own homes. I think that, you know, certainly uh, socializing with one another, um, I, I believe the other outcome has been that um, that they were able to gain a knowledge and appreciation for art and that when they see one another in the halls now they will ask one another if they're still you know doing some artwork and if uh, they could come and see some of their their art projects that maybe they've been working on and uh, we find that of the youth as well there are some youth that found that at school they were given certain projects and you had to do it this way, but they could become more creative. And, and some of them are now doing art on their own mm -hmm. and putting projects together on their own. Well, it's allowed me to connect with a whole new community of artists in the city. Um, I think that a lot of people participate in art all on different levels and I don't think a person necessarily has to be uh, at a professional level to really enjoy the arts. So hundreds of people do art part-time and they approach it very, very seriously. And I think that that's, that's something that, that we need to appreciate more. You know, these people that are doing just a little bit of art, I think we should we should be looking at their art too and, and seeing how important that is. Not just the art uh, you know, done by the professionals, but those done by, by the average people. And this has put me in contact with the average people, which I'm an average person myself, so I fit right in. <laughs>